everyone. I'm going to be reading the Bible today. Um, so we have two passages. The first is from Isaiah chapter 42, um, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant who I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. The creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. So the second reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Welcome. It's uh, great to see you. It's great to to be here all together uh, and to have people uh, of all ages uh, here uh, together. there is the creation parents' room, um, so those with little ones, if you do, if you do need that over the next little while, um, you can um, make use of that where you can still see and hear uh, what's going on. Uh, well, I'm wondering, uh, what are the voices that you have heard, the voices that you've been listening to uh, this week? Uh, perhaps... It is the the voice of someone else uh, in your home, Um, the voice of children perhaps, Uh, or your your spouse, Uh, or maybe it's the voice of music you've been listening to, Uh, Spotify or whatever, uh, however you you listen to your music, maybe YouTube, you've been listening, there's been a voice there that you've been uh, listening to this week. Um, For me, it was nice to have the... Monday is a public holiday, uh, listen to a, a few podcasts there, um, a couple in the morning, they were quite long, actually I don't know who, who it was that I was listening to, but uh, it was on Daniel's advice, um, who got a recommendation from Lockie, um, so that, that's what I've been listening to, and a little bit of uh, James, James Clear this week as well, through reading uh, and also a podcast. Well today's sermon is going to be uh, a little bit different uh, it's January, it's school holidays, um, we're all in together, all different ages. And so we, we do have a baptism, it is Jesus' baptism. Uh, we're just looking at these five verses in Matthew 3 uh, that Beck has just read. Uh, and we're going to be asking six questions. Uh, we're going to work through these six questions together uh, as we uh, make sense of Jesus' baptism. We have here a voice from heaven. And so we want to be thinking about, well, what, it will, what will it mean for us this morning uh, to hear this voice? What will it mean for us to, to listen to this voice from heaven? Uh, and what is it saying to us today? So this, if you like, it's a, it's a discovery method, not your normal sermon. 
Uh, so I'm not going to just be speaking the whole time. Uh, there's going to be uh, spots where you get to do a little bit of work. I'll do most of it, but you, you're going to have to help. All right, so I'll, I'll tell the story uh, again. Uh, but then we're, we're going to work through six questions. Uh, so there you go. They're the six questions that we're going to be working through together. So you might like to have a quick look at those um, so that you know uh, what's coming. So hopefully this will work. Um, but this is something you can do yourself uh, in your own Bible reading. Uh, so this week you're coming, you read God's Word. Um, to help you think about it, these six questions might be something you would like to use uh, yourself. Okay, so uh, Jesus comes uh, from, from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptised by John. Uh, but John's like, no, I can't baptise uh, you, you need, um, I need to be baptised by you. And so Jesus says, no, let, let it be so. Uh, this is right uh, in order to fulfil all righteousness. And so John does baptise Jesus. And as Jesus is baptised, as he comes up out of the water, uh, at that moment, uh, the heavens are opened. And the Spirit of God descends on Jesus, uh, comes upon Jesus. And then there's a voice from heaven. The voice says, this is my Son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Okay, so let me ask you the first question. Is there anything there that, that strikes you or surprises you? in what just happens, and you need to just maybe yell it out in a loud voice. Anything that surprises you or strikes you. One for me is Jesus is baptised. <laughs> like, like we know that, but that's, that's still um, striking or maybe surprising. Jesus gets baptised. Anything else that strikes you from what happens here? Yes, Janet. Why did he come into the desert and not the city where the people are? Okay, so it's getting you to, to ask a question. So we might go to our second question. What question does it get you asking? So Janet, what question does it get you asking? <laughs> Why did John come into the desert and not into the city where the people are? Okay, so why, why is John baptising uh, in the wilderness? Yeah, rather than the city where the people are. So the people have to go to him. All right. Are there other questions uh, that this gets you asking? Why was uh, John specifically chosen to baptise Jesus? Yeah, okay. So why, why was John chosen to baptise Jesus? Yeah, what does it mean to fulfill all righteousness? Good question. One or two others? Why the voice would come from heaven? Um, say that again, sorry. What? Why the voice would come from heaven? Yep. What is meaning by I'm pleased with it? Yep, okay, so the voice from heaven. Why this voice from heaven? What does that mean? Yep. With the voice, I'm wondering, does, does Jesus just hear it? Does everyone hear it? Is it for Jesus' benefit or is it for everyone's benefit? Or I'm sure there's other questions. Uh, I'm wondering like, how, how much at this stage did people know about Jesus? How much did John know? Uh, as you start to ask questions, like more, more questions come. And it it's helps you to explore, to see what's actually happening, uh, rather than just reading it and then closing your Bible and, and moving on. So explore, sort of interrogate it and, and ask some questions as to why, why is this happening? All right, well, um, I was going to write some of your questions down then, but I didn't, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember them all, so you might have to remind me uh, in, in a moment. Um, all right, so, wondering, um, there you go, there were some of mine. All right, can we, can we answer some of these questions? And so, yeah, why, why was John uh, baptising um, in, in the wilderness? I guess that's where he spent so much of his time. Uh, he, he grew up there. And um, as we looked at this uh, last week, 
And then in the, the Jordan, I guess there that's, that's a, a wilderness place uh, rather than the, the more where the people are. So that's John and that's what he did. Um, Kevin, what was your question? Yeah, why well, was... Yeah, yeah. So at this stage, the, um, Jesus hasn't uh, chosen the disciples. And then if we read in Luke's Gospel, and then you see there with um, his, his parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, uh, they in their old age would have a child. And so John had marked out uh, John uh, for this uh, special purpose. So I guess it was it was God's choice uh, that it would be uh, it would be John. Um, I, no, no one wanted to know well, why is Jesus baptized. That that was one of um, the thing that sort of struck me initially was just why is Jesus being baptized? So John's there in the wilderness baptizing. We looked at this last week. What type of baptism was John's? Uh, water, yep, and it was for repentance. Yeah, so people were coming to him, um, confessing their sins for uh, repentance. Um, the coming of the Lord, this, this is what was happening. So the people were coming to John to be baptized. So Jesus, does Jesus need to confess his sins? No, so we, we take that Jesus is sinless. Jesus, he's coming to save people from their sins, yet he's baptized. And so why is he uh, being uh, baptized? And like John himself isn't comfortable with baptizing Jesus. John knows that, well, he needs to be baptized by Jesus. And this is where Jesus answers it himself. And he, he says, no, John, like, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Now, John accepted that. He consented. He did it. Um, but like Laura, I'm wondering, what does that mean? <laughs> to fulfill all righteousness. And so, I, I don't think it's easy to know what that means. It doesn't seem to be straightforward. Um, what does that mean? Um, we could say that so it is God's will that Jesus be baptized, and so that fulfills all righteousness. This is the thing that, that God uh, wanted uh, to happen. Um, you got righteousness as well in terms of obedience. Uh, so Jesus does uh, what, what it is that his Father wants. So he is obedient to the Father's will. Uh, John does it because Jesus says so. And so it is proper to fulfill all righteousness. Uh, this is an act of obedience to God's purposes. I think that's the best I can do, Laura. I don't know if that, that helps or answers, um, but this was God's purpose and Jesus is giving himself uh, to that. Um, so Daniel asked about the, the voice. So, yeah, firstly, I think why? Why this voice uh, from, from heaven? Um, it's a significant moment. Jesus here is being uh, baptised. Um, before the voice, we have the Holy Spirit uh, coming down on him. Uh, that's a pretty um, momentous thing uh, as well. And then the voice. So I guess... Uh, God is making it known who this person is, as he then says, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. So uh, we, we'll come back to that in just a moment, because we also read before from Isaiah 42, and so there's a, a little connection there, I think, from that Old Testament prophet, and then the voice that, that comes down Um, were there any other questions there that people had? Um, uh, yep. Did Jesus himself ever baptize anyone? Did Jesus baptize anyone? Answer? We're thinking no. Yeah. Um, 
the voice as well. And so did Jesus hear it? Did everyone there hear it? So Jesus is coming to be baptized. Lots of others were. So I'm thinking there's lots of other people around. So this is a a public uh, thing. Um, As you read it, like with the the Spirit coming down, it it says there only Jesus saw it. Well, it only mentions Jesus. Uh, With the voice, it just says that there is this this voice. It says, this is uh, my son. That sounds like it is for whoever is there, that they hear this declaration from God uh, as to who is uh, this one. So what, what does this voice tell us uh, about Jesus? And so that's the, the next question. Uh, question four, what, what does it tell us about uh, Jesus? What does it tell us about Jesus? So we've already spoken about his obedience And so Jesus is obedient to his Father's will. So this is what God God wants, and so Jesus does that. Um, I think it speaks into his humility uh, as well. Um, So Jesus Jesus is God, and we've seen that the last few weeks, God with us. Um, He's man and God. And so here we really see his, his humanity um, but how, like Jesus didn't need to be baptized, did he? Yet he is, and he is identifying perhaps with all the other people who are coming to be baptized. So that's quite humbling. This is God himself in the flesh as a man, and he is there uh, with all the other people who are coming to be baptized. So I think it's, it's humbling. Um, but if we look at verses 16 and 17, I think that really speaks into, from here, uh, who is uh, Jesus. So firstly, in verse 16, we have the Holy Spirit descend on him. So he is anointed with the Holy Spirit uh, in the most spectacular way. Now, uh, in, in the Old Testament, um, think then, who was anointed? Kings. So kings were anointed with, with the Spirit. So you might think back to um, Israel's first king was who? Saul. Now, Saul, there was one day, remember, he lost his donkeys, and he's out there looking for his donkeys, and then he meets a man named Samuel, and Samuel then anointed him, put some olive oil on his head, and that was a sign that he would be the king. Then after Saul, who was the next king? David. And so again, um, the day came and Samuel uh, went to Jesse's home and lined up all the, the sons of Jesse, and, and, and one by one, and then asked, is, is there another one? And the youngest of them all, David, he was the one who was then anointed uh, with oil. He would be the king. Here Jesus is baptized, and he is anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. This is a, this is a sign that he uh, will be king. Now, we already know this. We know that Jesus is king, and we've already read Matthew 1 and 2. And in the very first verse of Matthew's gospel, it said there uh, that Jesus is the Messiah. And the Messiah is another way of talking about uh, the king. And in chapter 2, we saw on Christmas Day when the Magi came to worship the one who had been born king of the Jews. And here he is anointed with the Holy Spirit. He is our King. Uh, so this is confirmation from heaven, if you like, that Jesus is the King. And then verse 17, we have the voice, the voice from heaven. And so what does this voice uh, tell us? Uh, can someone look up Isaiah 42, verse 1, um, which we, we read uh, just a moment ago? And as you do that, uh, someone else uh, can read uh, in a nice loud voice uh, verse, verse 17 of um, Matthew 3. Yeah, nice loud voice. Thank you. The voice from heaven, this is my son whom I love, with him 
I am well pleased. And who's got Isaiah 42 verse 1? Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. Now, what do you notice about those two verses? Uh, Yeah, God is pleased. So that is there in both. He's pleased in whom I delight. The spirit is, is there here and... Well, it wasn't in verse 17, but it was in verse 16 with the Spirit descending on him. So it's very similar, very similar. So not identical, but very uh, similar. And so uh, Beck read before um, Isaiah 42 and now down to verse 9. Uh, Isaiah 42 is known as the, the servant of the Lord. Uh, there's four of these passages uh, in, in Isaiah, also known as the suffering servant. And so what this tells us about Jesus, he is both the king, the Messiah, but also the promised servant. He is the king and he is the servant. Uh, that is Jesus. Uh, he would go on uh, and he would say, uh, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus, who is both king uh, and servant, and he would go to the cross and be crucified. He would lay down his life, taking the, the sin of the world, but then his life would be raised up again and he would be exalted to be the king Uh, where he rules uh, still uh, today. And so it brings us to the the next question, question five. Uh, So what? Who cares? Uh, Why why does this matter? So it's very well to look at this and say, yep, Jesus was baptized. There was this voice from heaven. But so what? Uh, Who cares? So this is the question of significance uh, or of uh, relevance. So what we have here in Jesus' baptism, uh, God declares who Jesus is. So this is not just the opinion of of anyone. Uh, This is God himself telling us who Jesus is. And so uh, we should listen uh, to this voice. Jesus' baptism, uh, it's a confirmation. Uh, it's It's a confirmation of who Jesus is. Uh, That he is the promised one. He is God's son. He is both the king and the servant. And so this is a a commissioning, a commissioning service for him as he is about to to go and and begin uh, his, his ministry. He is the one that God sends into this world uh, so that we can know God. Uh, this, this is that the Father sending His Son into the world and, and confirming who He is. And did you notice in these, these few verses, uh, we have the work of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the Trinity, uh, all, all here. We have the, the voice of the Father, this is my Son. We have the Son, we have Jesus Himself there being baptised. Uh, And we have the Holy Spirit coming upon him. Uh, One God, but three persons, and they are all all here. So if God speaks, this voice from heaven, this is God speaking, then we should listen. There are different voices that you've um, been listening to this week. Um, Are they good voices to listen to? For you to listen to, for other people to listen to, if it's your spouse, then yeah, that's good for you to listen to them. Here is a voice that everyone needs to listen to. What about, there's other voices, right? Like voices all the time. There's one that keeps coming up at the moment, Prince Harry. 
There's another interview this week. Like, is that something worth listening to? <laughs> no. But well, some of you are going to li- watch it or listen to it. Like. But it's like, enough, Harry. Like, we don't really care about you and Megan. Like, but what we have here, this is the voice of God. Right? Jesus baptized, the heavens open, and God speaks. And so this is a voice for us to listen to. This voice would be heard, so the, the disciples aren't here at this point. Um, three of them would be privileged to hear this voice as well. So Jesus would then uh, go up um, go on the mount at the transfiguration. So this is just after uh, they've seen, they've declared that he is the Messiah. And uh, Jesus confirms that to them. They go up the mountain. Uh, Jesus is transfigured, so he's seen in, in all his glory. And then there is a voice from heaven that comes then. And the voice says, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Exactly the same voice, except there's three more words there. Listen to him. That's what God says. Listen to Jesus. God the Father says, listen to God the Son. Now this term uh, at church, um, all of us, the kids, the youth, everyone here in a church, we're going to be uh, hearing the teaching of Jesus uh, in the Sermon of the Mount, uh, Matthew 5 to 7. The question will be, will we listen? Will we listen to Jesus this term? And what will it mean for us to truly uh, listen? Zalia listened to Rachel before, and she was able to to repeat uh, to us all at the young age uh, what Rachel had said to her. Uh, Jaden heard heard the message, and with a bit of prompting, uh, he took action. As we hear Jesus teach this term, what will it mean for us to listen to him? Our children, when I am... When mum or dad says to you, uh, can you please clean your room? Um, what does that mean, to listen? If they then, a few hours later, say again, can you please clean your room? Do you think you listened the first time? You might have heard, but what does it mean to, to listen? Uh, Jesus will go on and he will, he will say this, so at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, he will say, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So to listen, to truly listen, is to respond. And so our last question is, what will we do with this? Uh, What will you do with this? It might mean believe. Believe that Jesus is who God says he is. That he is the promised one. He is the king. He is the, the servant. And so not just believe it, but then obey. Obey Jesus as he calls us to, to live a life. If we, if we truly listen to Jesus and obey him, the things that he speaks about in that Sermon on the Mount, like that will turn our life upside down, right? If we actually do that, uh, we will be different to the world around us. So believe, obey. And like, why this really matters is that like last, last week we're looking at, at Jesus and John said that he will come, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then it goes on and speaks about um, the winnowing fork that is in his hands. So Jesus comes to save, but also to judge. And so that's why it's really important to, um, to listen to Jesus and to respond. And so you might like to ask yourself 
um, this week. What will it mean for you this week to listen to Jesus? What might it mean for you this week to listen to Jesus? And what might you be able to do to help yourself to hear and obey him? Uh, last week, we finished uh, with, with this little graphic, um, which, again, might help you to, to respond. Thinking about your, your head, your heart, your hands. Is there something there God is calling you to think differently about? Or a reordering of your, your heart, what it is that you love or calling you to do? Is there one of those from this part of God's Word? Uh, today. I'll leave that with you and we are going to, to sing uh, in response.